This is the amplitude adjuster for the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0. And everything I'm going to show you is in the library for the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0. If you go down to the second shelf here, you'll see this book, Jigs, Fixtures, and Add-ons. It's the red one. And if I open that book, I will get this document, which right now only has the amplitude adjuster in it. But as we come up with new add-ons and features, we will add them to this book. So that will be changing over time. Version 1 only has the amplitude adjuster in it. Okay. So it consists of a pretty simple design. And there's only one piece that's a little hard to make. But the rest is makeable in, you know, in anybody's typical shop they have in their home. So there's a piece of MDF here, which is the spacer block and it holds the rubbers for the amplitude adjuster in the correct alignment with the rosettes. Then there's a horizontal arm here. Now this does have a slot in it and this is the only piece that's a little bit difficult to make. So if your son works in a machine shop or has access to one, you might want to get him to cut this slot for you. This is a quarter inch thick by one inch tall aluminum standard stock bar. You can get it really anywhere. And there's a slot cut in it so that I can move it in and out to make sure that these vertical arms are aligned with the column here and also that it's set properly. Okay. The vertical arms run along an axle which is this. It's actually a quarter by 20 screw that has an unthreaded area and it's cut off and it's held in place with two nuts and then there's a spacer here between the two vertical arms and a collar holding it in place. The two vertical arms are a little bit non-standard, but not terribly. They're three-quarter by one-inch aluminum bar. I couldn't get them at Lowe's or Ace. I had to go to the superstore for metals, or the metal superstore, whatever they call it. Uh, but they're they're not non-standard, so it's it's fairly easy to get. Okay, by having two vertical arms, though, and you can see the outboard one and the inboard one, it allows me to have separate adjustments for each of the two rosettes. And indeed, what I have here are two rubbers that are independently adjusted so that, in this case, I'm engaging the D30 rosette here, which is on the outboard side, differently than the standard Puffy 5 rosette, that's our P5, whatever you want to call it, which is on the inboard side. And I could switch that if I wanted uh, by just changing the alignment of these two rubbers. By the way, you'll notice that the rubber support piece, which is this piece, has been flipped 180 degrees and that was the design that was built into the MDF Rose Engine Lathe 2.0 as well as the ability to move this vertically wherever I wanted it. And that's achieved by having these two T-tracks vertically allowing me to position it wherever I want. Okay. So the shape of this rubber you know, really doesn't matter. You could use roller bearings, you can use whatever you want. I have these plastic rubbers, so I'm using those. The shape that does matter is this one. And this is the amplitude adjustment rubber. And in this case, they came to a point. But I could have other designs, such as I could have a flat, or I could have it round. Um, and indeed, I could even mix and match and say, have a flat on one rosette, rubbing against one rosette, and a round against the other. The, the nice thing is you can do whichever you want to achieve the artistic uh, design that you're trying to get to. You could also design your own. Really, the, there are very little things that matter here. The, the key thing that matters is you have to have the cutout for this arm, which in this case, as I said, is going to be a quarter inch by three quarters inch. And all those d details are in the manual. And then you have to have a place that has to be a bit of an inset here so that the head of the screw, you can see on this one, uh, has a place to sit down so that it, it gives you a flush on the surface because you're going to have to have these two rosettes, the rubbers for these rosettes will be moving against each other as you move. Not that much, but they will be moving independently of each other. So they need to be able to slide and, and you couldn't have this head sticking up or you would just hit these heads and that wouldn't work. So it, it's just a simple design. I used a Forstner bit because it gave me a flat surface there. Um, those are fairly common. I guess you could use a spade bit, but forcer bits work quite well. All right. Um, 
The other thing that's of note here is this block here, which is an alignment block. It's made of MDF also. And what that really does is it keeps the arms from swaying too much this direction and losing their alignment with the rosettes. It's um, not hard to make and it's just held in place onto the T-track, the vertical T-track. You could position this down here, which would allow you to move your rosettes here up or down. That would allow you to start multiplying, or changing your amplitude adjustment so that it's an increased amplitude versus a decreased amplitude. Anything below the spindle here at zero down is going to be a decrease in amplitude, decreasing more as you move away from the spindle, and it's going to be an increase in amplitude as you move up. This tape that I've used here is standard stuff from Scotch, and uh, I like it because it allows me to get a good reference here. And that reference is useful, and we've given you here, and it's in the Multiple Stepper Motors User's Guide. Um, you'll see there's an Amplitude Adjustment Calculator, and this is a good estimate. So what I can do is I can go in here and, let me just give you a minute to enter this. So what I've set is, that I have 12 inches from the axis here, which is the axle for the headstock motion to the spindle. I have eight inches from my axle here where the vertical arms move to the spindle, which this is at the spindle, so I have eight inches. And I've moved this down from the spindle here two inches. And now I can just run a calculation that tells me I'm gonna get roughly 90% uh, of my amplitude versus 100% um, if I were there. It's not an exact science for this calculation, but it's going to give you pretty close to that estimated just, uh, amount of amplitude. Okay. Let me show you an additional option that we have here, and it's going to be based on these. So the reason there are two vertical arms is not simply so that I can adjust them in, but I also want to adjust that amplitude. So I'm going to use these, which these are little clamps that have a space in here to go around these, and it's rounded on here. So let me get it all set up and I'll show you how these are used. The clamps I just showed are now attached to the vertical arms, and they rub against this backstop here, which is three pieces of MDF that have been glued together to provide me a flat surface. I don't know that I need the full two and a quarter inches, but it's easy to do with MDF. I just glued the pieces together. By flipping the design and attaching these rubbers now to the vertical arms, it gives me two capabilities. I certainly have the same capability I had before where I can vary the engagement by moving these in or out. And there is a, a slot here. You could make these even wider if you wanted. I just gave it about uh, a quarter inch or maybe three eighths so that I can engage one rosette. In this case, the outboard rosette is engaged more than the inboard rosette, which is on this vertical arm. And it also allows me to move them up or down. And in this case, I've got my outboard rosette set at 90%, which we calculated before. The inboard rosette at four inches now is at 75%. The clamps are made from pieces of aluminum uh, or aluminum if you're British and they just are two separate pieces as I showed earlier quite easy to make um, I made them here using my bandsaw and uh, just drilled the holes and tapped them the uh, back piece is tapped these are straight through holes allowing the number 832 screws to hold it in place so this is a lot of opportunity here with this amplitude adjustment design and it's easy to make uh, easy to develop for your machine so I hope you're able to make one for yours and you're able to enjoy it even more. Thank you for your time. Bye-bye.